Hey everyone, I'm Noah, an indie game developer. I've been creating video games for almost five years, the first being in October 2016 with my brother. It was a cute 3D top-down shooter called Midnight Fire, made using the Unity game engine. Since then I've made dozens and dozens of unfinished prototypes and completed and released about 50 games, two of which are now on Steam. Two years ago I made a video showing all the games I had made up until that point and sharing the lessons learned along the way. That's quite a long time ago though and I've created plenty of things since then, so consider this to be a follow-up, a look back at all the games I've created alone or in a team since April 2019 and just what those projects taught me. Life is Snot was made for the 2019 GMTK Game Jam. I teamed up with Jonas Tyroller, a fellow game developer and YouTuber. It features strange little creatures called snots that live for only one minute. They must quickly mate to give birth to fresh new snotlings, lest they grow old and wither away before passing on their genes. It's a small adventure involving quite a bit of exploration, some platforming challenges and puzzles. The snot gains different abilities throughout its life cycle, such as flying. It also changes size and has an ever-shifting move speed and jump height. Perhaps the main takeaway from this project was the experience working with Jonas. A good teammate just keeps you on your toes and the conversations really spark creativity. The Dreadful Whispers came out shortly after Life is Snot. At that time this was my biggest game project and first commercial title. It's an adventure about overcoming fear filled with puzzles, exploration, secrets and spooky creatures. I spent more than nine months creating this world and documenting the process in the devlog. Sticking to it was a real challenge and a priceless experience. It taught me patience, consistency and discipline when motivation was low. I collaborated with an excellent music composer, Dave Allen, who made a haunting, beautiful soundtrack for the game's world. Everything else, from art to code, was made by my own hands. I also learned how to use Steamworks, the tool developers use to launch games in Steam. Almost two years after launch, the game has earned me $16,000 in gross revenue, making for a nice little stream of passive income. The Howler. So for some context, two years ago I was struggling a little with social media, feeling addicted to likes, subscribers and validation from the world. I was perhaps trying to find some drama and was a little whingy. So The Howler is basically a representation of how I felt I was at that time, yelling and spluttering to gain attention. I'm glad to say I've left that behind so I can remain focused and grateful for this awesome community I'm a part of. But I love how arts such as games can capture a mood or time period, a bit like a diary, and looking back brings back memories and lessons learned. <laughs> Following that are a few tiny games made in a couple days. These are experiments made to have fun and test ideas. Little Humans is a strategy game where you drag and drop these squishy characters to collect resources such as wood, blood and crystals. You can then use these raw materials to create more humans, plant forests or place spiky traps to ward off dark creatures. To win you must sacrifice your poor men on a gore drenched altar, so quite a spooky creation despite the colourful artwork but it was surprisingly interesting to play around with. There's a lot of multitasking, resource balancing and micromanagement involved. Next we have Tunnel. This is a minimalist rage game where you need to direct a tiny goo ball down twisting corridors, making sure to not hit any walls. It's actually quite frustrating. Then there's Wonderfully Juicy, a physics puzzler. You manipulate simple machines to get little jelly beans from point A to B. Bouncy physics was a lot of fun to mess with and very satisfying to watch. Good Vibes, a tiny, feel-good Christmas adventure. You move from one small planet to another and this movement system would soon spark the idea for a Dashing Fire's movement system, my second commercial game, but more on that later. I love mixing large and small projects because both have very different benefits. Big tests your perseverance, pushes you to your limits, it might result in something people will play for hours on end, finding joy and inspiration. Small, on the other hand, can be a breath of fresh air, a way to create without too many expectations and just test wacky ideas that might fail. Edgar's Blobs, made for the famous Ludam Dare 46 game jam. I teamed up with Jonas again and we had 72 hours to create a little world. This one features slurpees and you move them around bouncy environments using boxes and rotating platforms. 
It's a challenging experience, but was a joy to create. I'm learning that using simple shapes and reusing our assets, changing color, rotating, scaling and moving things around can make for a lot of variety without too much effort or time, which is key when working in a small team on a very tight time constraint. Levels range from deep forest green to ominous reds, and simple parallax details add depth to the 2D world, with pipes in the foreground for example. Nursery Curse is another game jam creation, again with Jonas and an additional pair of very talented hands belonging to Yan. Together we made a chaotic nursery simulator. Angry kids start fights in the toilets, others find joy by lighting fires, and during the middle of all this, comforting wailing infants and stopping wild hotheads from punching their classmates. It's quite hilarious at times. While working on games, I would also be creating game development courses with my brother, sharing with the community the things I learned on my journey, such as programming in C-sharp, using the Unity game engine, designing levels and mechanics, and making artwork and animations. These courses are a work of passion for this incredible craft. You can learn how to make your very first video game, and maybe from there, you can take a course on creating a top-down shooter, a platformer adventure, a turn-by-turn -turn strategy game, or even an online multiplayer arcade game. We've provided special links in the description of this video so you can purchase each course at massive discounts. This is an amazing way to support me and my brother and just learn a great deal about the world of game development. With that said, Spherical Delight was made for Mrs's unique four game developers jam off the same art kit series. We had to use this space asset pack from Kenny, and I ended up making a small arcade dodging game set on mini 3D planets. It had been a long time since my last 3D project and definitely got me thinking about doing more in the future. An extra dimension certainly adds many new creative possibilities. And so while working on all these small game jam experiments, I'd been cooking a much larger pot of stew, dashing fire. It took me roughly 10 months to complete this fast-paced planet-hopping roguelike, which would join the dreadful whispers in the mighty ocean that is steam. Although it's not as successful as the first from a financial point of view, the reviews are, and I just prefer it. This does go to show, however, that I still have a lot to learn when it comes down to marketing. Dashing Fire was an awesome challenge to tackle. There's a dozen unique boss characters, five distinct areas, a beastry with lore, power-ups and cutscenes, and again, Dave went above and beyond with the music. Wherefore, the dreadful whispers I'd been excessive in my work habits, at times hustling late into the night, now I was learning to pace myself, and in so doing, finding a lot more joy in the craft, and funnily enough, getting more done in a couple hours than I ever did through long, burned-out sessions with eyes growing sore from the constant glare of the screen. And so after launching that, meet Squabbles, a tiny strategy game made with my brother Liam. Again, the contrast between a giant 10-month behemoth and a one-week sprint gets the creative juices flowing. It's a turn-by-turn -turn local multiplayer game, a mix of risk-reward, some luck, and a balancing act between short and long-term gains. The Twisted Factory. This was made for the third Blackthorn Prod game jam which I hosted. Working alongside the community and seeing the thousands of games being made for the event was inspiring. This was one of my favorite game development weeks. It's a puzzle card game where you must remove every single card representing machine parts from the level. You do so by using the machine's unique abilities and carefully managing your energy. Card games are one of my favorite genres. Slay the Spire, Dominion, Hearthstone have fueled me with creativity over the years and it was so great to finally make my own. Illustrating this world was also a real blast. I'm often asked what tools I use to make my art. I use an Intuos Pro Medium drawing tablet and more than five years old and it still works a charm, as well as Adobe Photoshop. Necrobomb. This is a spooky little adventure made in a haunting silhouette art style. This was made for the Wowie Game Jam, the theme being failure is progress. So you play as a necromancer who, when killed, will turn into a little smoky ghost that can fly around, being able to pass over obstacles and reach far off places. I'm learning to really love simplicity. 
how a blank square can still make stylish platforms, and simple turrets faded into the backgrounds add depth and atmosphere. Being a minimalist with gameplay and focusing on a single set of mechanics, juicing it out and stretching it to its limits is a very interesting design exercise. The links to play all these games is of course in the description. They're all free except for The Dreadful Whispers and Dashing Fire. Your feedback and thoughts on this work of course is greatly appreciated. Anyway, next up we have Going Down in Fishstory. This was made in a team of four, which is the biggest one I've ever been a part of. It includes Jonas, Yan, and my brother. Together we made a small underwater adventure filled with spooky creatures. Notes that for every single game mentioned in this video, you'll find a much more detailed behind the scenes devlog on this channel. So if you want to find out more about how a particular game was made, the thought process behind it, challenges faced and so on, just take a look at the playlist linked in the description. Finally, we have Olobolo. This is a local multiplayer deathmatch game that's been in the works for three months and is launching on Steam on the 11th of June. I've been creating this with my brother and have had many great laughs with friends while playtesting. It's a mix of football and magic, a fast-paced experience where games are won through precision and skill. For the last few months, we've been thoroughly enjoying local multiplayer party games, such as Ultimate Chicken Horse, Unspottable, and Rounds. This is our first take on the genre, and we really hope you'll enjoy it. You can wishlist it on Steam so you get notified when it gets released. It even has a solo adventure mode, filled with challenging arenas against hordes of squishy horrors. And that's everything so far. Again, part 1 features all the games made between 2016 and April 2019. So if you're interested in taking a quick look at 30 more games I've made, you can watch that video. Hopefully this was interesting and has got you eager to continue work on your own projects. Thank you for watching, stay tuned, we post regular devlogs and game dev tutorials. Cheers!